Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mindset Entrepreneur video podcast. I am your host, Mark Altman, and I'm here with my guest today, Melissa Glenny, founder of Franklin Professional Associates. Uh, Melissa, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Good to have you here today. And Melissa is a master of recruiting and staffing. She's uh, taken on a very challenging and competitive industry and has uh, a tremendous amount of experience. And Melissa, I, I guess I'd like to start out with you today and kind of understand... Uh, I know you had a, a you have a great passion for music, mm -hmm. and kind of how your passion for music kind of maybe perhaps spun off into staffing and recruiting. It it did it did. I was in college uh, studying uh, production engineering and uh, noticed that there were uh, fair amount of graduates from Berkeley where I was attending that were um, going on to be baristas. So I went to a temp agency and got a job, and the rest is history. So happily ever after. The bug bit, and I never got out. <laughs> So, Melissa, one of the things about uh, staffing and recruiting, I, I've always felt in my career and talking to many other leaders and executives is it's so hard to understand the right criteria when choosing a company and really understanding that it's so critical hiring and employee retention and things like that. So for our listeners out there that are watching, how do you do it? How do you know if A, the company you exist, your current company is the right company, and B, if you're considering taking the plunge to using a company like yours, how do I know what, what the right fit is? Yeah, that's a great question. There's so many different companies to choose from, and there are certainly those that fit well and wouldn't fit well. Um, my suggestion is always to, I always ask a customer, what, tell me about your last quarterly business review with your, with your vendor. And most of the time they say, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was thinking, <laughs> thank God you haven't asked me that yet, but okay, good. Um, and, and so, you know, that's what you start with. And so if you're not getting a quarterly business review, then it's something to at least approach your partners with and say, can we have a review? Uh, hopefully they, you know, have come, come up with something like, oh, yeah, it's time. We need to do that. And they have a process for it. I've had the pleasure of, of learning from a company that did it very, very well. Um, and it, you involve all the key stakeholders throughout the company to really get a comprehensive view of what it is that they need, what what are the key uh, features that the program needs, what are the challenges, where are the gaps, and then it's a matter of what is your partner or what are your partners doing to fill those gaps, and give that some time, you know, and then figure out if it's working, and then you know what you need to go out and shop for if it doesn't work. So are there from a KPIs or metrics or something like that, are there a couple that you would highlight that if they are doing those reviews, it should include a few of those specifically that you think are important? Well, based on what I hear from customers, I would say that the, the key uh, top considerations tend to be time to fill and the quality. Um, and I probably would reverse that to quality and time to fill. Um, those those two, two key factors are, are through and through uh, really important to people. So I, I know people value you and your company so much for your uh, industry expertise and knowledge, local marketing knowledge, and so on and so forth. One of the things I've always wondered, Melissa, that I've been wanting to ask you is, it's one thing to understand quality from hires and fires. It's another thing to understand that the people that stay, how good they are mm -hmm. relative. So how do, you, how do you assess that? Yeah. You know, one of the questions that I love to ask when I'm sitting down and assessing, I, I call it a, an intake, basically, with okay. a manager. I'll say, what is this person six months from now or three months from now, maybe? It depends on the role. What is it that they will have done or what problem will they have solved that will constitute this being a successful placement? Maybe that's shooting out to a, a 12 months. And the other question um, that, that I ask is, you know, what would constitute failure? Things have changed in tenure, as you might have noticed. Mm. Two years with a company is pretty good for a lot of people these days. Ten years ago, two years, two years, two years was a flag. So I rely on, on managers to, to tell me, what does success look like? So I, I know one of the, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think one of the fears around staffing and recruiting is the cost of making the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. And, and not just that, the cost of making the wrong decisions, but the um, ups and downs of the marketplace itself, uh, of the ups and downs of the marketplace itself and the people in it. So how do you, how can you assuage those fears of, of they could be irrational sometimes, but how, could you, how, how are you able to assuage those fears? 
Yeah. You know, one, one thing I always say is you can't solve a retention problem with a recruiting solution. Mm. So I really try to get at, you know, where the fears are coming from and, and what are the past stories that those fears are being born from. So in some cases, you know, it's a matter of just check, getting a reality check and, and, you know, showing managers, you know, the situation that they're dealing with and, and educating them really um, so that they understand, well, we're going to have to tweak a couple of things within our organization if we want things to work the way that we're expecting them to work. And then once we have that foundation, then we can go from there and defining the profile of the person and what we need to assess for. And so, you know, if we if we start out on a shaky foundation, which is what I look to determine when I'm assessing the situation of the company, then it, then you don't have very, um, you're not set up for very good success. So I really try to make sure that foundation is shored up before we set forth. So, so one of the things before we have guests on the show, I really try to vet out the reputation of our guests to make sure they're high quality entrepreneurs. And I know you and your company have such an amazing reputation. What is it that you do from a trust perspective? Because that's so big in entrepreneurship. How are you able to establish the trust that people have the confidence that you can execute for them? Yeah, you know, I, it's, uh, I think first, it's just being trustworthy. You know, it's just kind of, yeah, I, I, I give my trust. Um, I think that that's one of the things that really establishes it right out of the gate. Um, and I feel so fortunate because that's something that's just so rich in the relationships that we have and the companies that we work with. Um, you know, they know that they can call up and say, you know, hey, we, we don't have a huge budget, but we're trying to make something happen. Can you help us? And they know that I'll be there to try to figure out how to, you know, solution find. And so I, I think that when they see that you just genuinely care about their well-being, um, it certainly, it doesn't relate to anything I particularly say. It's more of our actions. Well, so that's important. And, and that brings us to core values. You know, integrity is a core value and walking the walk and talking the talk. Mm -hmm. So when you were younger, you know, did you have influences in your life that really helped you and set you on a good path? And if you did, how have you taken the things that you were taught to serve your customers in the best way? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, my childhood, like m most people's childhood, I think, was was sometimes tumultuous and chaotic. And uh, so I really struggled. And my my mother was uh, a, a real beacon of light for me uh, through the storm. And she was very supportive. Um, so, you know, I, I have the experience of of feeling stuck and not knowing which way to turn and frustrated. And today, I meet so many people in my in my work that are in that exact situation and, or in that that state, I should say. And that's I think what really drives me is just that that um, compulsion to say, hey, it doesn't have to stay this way. It's it's just a temporary state. There's solutions and and shine some light. Well, and I think, Melissa, to me, I think when you're in the business of helping people, which you are, I think. I really believe this, Amara. You can only help people if you've experienced the vulnerability yourself and you know what it's like to be in the shoes of needing help and also receiving the help and being able to receive that help. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you experienced that because, uh, as you taught me, the recruiting and staffing are two very different sides of the business. And so you're dealing with many companies, but you're also dealing with many individuals. Yeah. And so balancing needs and balancing being a support system, and it's not just hey, how much money can I get you and what's the great job? It's the relationship along the way and understanding people's fears. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of motives are, are fundamentally related to fears. So if we can get there, we, we can really get people what they're looking for. Well, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think motives and motivators are so critical to really setting people on the right path, understanding what drives them and motivates them. So, uh, you know, I know you're located in Lemonster, and um, is how big of a factor does geography play in the clients you serve? Uh, well, less, much less than it, it did at one point in time. You know, I started 17 years ago, and we were we were had people walking in for interviews, and we were faxing resumes. But I found when I I spent seven eight years in Westboro and Marlboro uh, running teams uh, that we were going to Lemonster to recruit 
Because, wow. Yeah, there's a, a significant outflow of professionals who live in that area and they're traveling to the boroughs or they're going into Boston or they're going up to Nashua. So it just made sense if we're, we could be where all the jobs are, which is in the boroughs in Boston and, and Boston North, or we could go be where the people are. They come in and meet us after. Seems like kind of a no-brainer when you put it like that. I like that. Uh, um, and then they go off to work after they meet with us. So it, it's just, it happened to be a really good spot. And I love that I also live there. <laughs> wow. And so what about companies? If they are deciding, let's say they had two or three companies they were looking for to do their staffing and or recruiting for them. What, what should they be asking you? What are the questions they should be asking you to vet you out or any other company out for that matter? What, what, do you, what, what advice would you give these companies to say, if you ask these questions, you'll be on a much better path to select the right company? Mm. You know, I, if, if I were in their shoes, I would ask to talk to customers and no one does that, but I, that tends to be the way that I choose partners. I, I always want to talk to a, another customer or two. Uh, but as far as just basic questions go, you know, I, I would ask things about, you know, the experience of the team, the, the process that they follow, um, and whatever their process may be, it may be relevant to the customer or not, but at least to know that there is a process and to understand what it is so that if they meet someone and the agency had only phone screened, you know, the last thing you want is for there to be a disconnect between the expectations and, and the customer saying, you didn't even meet this person. Um, so I would ask those questions. I would also ask questions about metrics. You know, how long would it take to fill this kind of a position? Or, um, you know, what can we expect in terms of uh, turnover? You know, what do you see? And, and it just gets the dialogue going, which I think is valuable for both parties. So, you know, I know you've had 17 years of experience. One, one question I would wonder is, when you first started in the industry, over the 12 years you worked previously before you started the company, what are some lessons you've learned that maybe approaches or strategies you took back at your old company that you, you learn from and you've approached very differently now? Oh, yeah. I was so fortunate to work for three awesome companies before I, I ventured out. And what I did is I really tried to take the best practices and and amplify them and things that were frustrating to me that made me feel like it was difficult to serve the cut, really serve the customer. You know, we had um, as you need, you know, pillars and rules and there was red tape and, um, you know, sometimes the customer needed us to tweak something and and we just couldn't do it. So um, I struggled with that so much. And that was one of the one of a big motivator for me mm. to, to venture out on my own. So I could say, you know, I want to be able to really be creative and craft something that's maybe totally different and 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 out of the box and not get not not a. Uh, not be in trouble for it. <laughs> well, honestly, Melissa, that to me is the best part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's because you can create, be creative, craft that solution that you know in your heart based on the experience and your ability exactly. to succeed. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's do some rapid fires to finish up today. Most important characteristic in managing people. I want to say trust, but I, I, I think that I'm going to have to say it's communication because mm. trust, if you can't communicate. Well said. <laughs> well said. Right, because to, to know if, if, if you can trust or earn the trust, you have to know, you have to be able to communicate to find that out. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Uh, how about taking care of customers? What's the most important characteristic there? Um, I, I think it's genuinely caring to take care of them. And, and that means also knowing when you can't take care of them that you can get them in the right hands. Our job is, is sometimes very difficult. Yep. It's tedious. Our inventory can walk right off the shelf frustrating sometimes. So if you don't really care and have something intrinsically driving you to keep going and figure it out for your customer, it, it's, uh, it's easy to say, well, maybe I should focus on something else. Well, and that's critical what you just said. It's the intrinsic motivator. Yeah. That's the key. Um, and, you know, I got a piece of advice in, in the various companies I've started and worked with over the years. I got a piece of advice and it was that the customer sign your paychecks not not that not your boss yeah. or the, the owners or whatever and it's really the truth it is uh okay and last question is what's the worst thing you know your experience as an entrepreneur looking back at the different challenges you faced over the years in your career um 
what, what's the worst thing someone could do now that you look back and see some of the mistakes that you've learned from and some of the successes that you've learned from, what would you tell aut aspiring entrepreneurs not to do? Uh, it sounds so simple, but I have to say this probably is the advice that I would give anybody in, a, in just about any situation. Just never lie. It, it's just, um, it, it's so destructive and it's so unnecessary. So that would be my number one never, never do. Awesome. Well, so thank you so much for joining us today. We're thrilled to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All it's right. been a pleasure. So Melissa Glenny, founder of Franklin Professional Associates, doing, not doing, excelling at staffing and recruiting. I'm your host, Mark Altman, and thank you for joining us for the Mindset Entrepreneur video podcast.